Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to more Metroid Other M. Ah, uh, well, I thought this was going to be the last episode of the series, so I decided to record this, uh, this audio after the video. I thought I would record myself doing some item collection and then fighting the final boss and finishing the game. Needless to say, that's not the case. And the reason I wanted to do it this way is because I wanted to kind of give my review of the game as I collected the final bits of the items that are left over. You see, one thing I realized when I was getting ready for this episode is that the game reveals every item to you once you beat the game and you start this post game because you remember in the last episode we beat the game we defeated the um, ai that's come to life that has a body named you know the, the other m evelyn uh, bergwine or bergman rather who was named after the real one and uh, we beat her um in a sense we, um, you know, were able to get the Galactic Federation to stand down because, um, you know, there were still things left to be done and the mission had to be completed the way that the Galactic Federation had decided that it was going to be completed. And so uh, they released her into our custody. And um, the game ends with us kind of saying we feel bad for her and I went on a rant about how much I don't think we should have felt bad for her and then I thought the game was gonna end <laughs> um, but no it didn't because we're back in the bottle ship because Samus forgot something here you see and Samus had to come back for whatever item it is that she's um, that she forgot and I swear to goodness if it's a baby if it has anything to do with the baby I'm going to lose my mind <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what this item is or why it's so important to her, but I, goodness, goodness gracious. So anyway, so I'll, during this whole time, I'm like, all right, well, you know, I start the game up and look at my map and all the items are revealed. Now I can confirm this is true because the, the game tells you right there, main sector, 84%. I have collected 84% of the items in the main sector and all the other sectors tell you as much that you're not done with the game. And so I found this kind of curious. And so what I realized is that the game has revealed, you see that blue dot right there, it's off to the side. We've never been there before. Why would the game tell me that it's there? It makes no sense. That's when I realized the game has revealed every single pickup. And in my head, I was like, I don't like this. And in my head, I was like, I'm not going to go collect every item in the game specifically because the game has revealed them to me and let me explain why i feel and this is this might be hard to explain i feel like i haven't earned it i feel like the game is giving it to me without me having to have worked for it and so i just wanted to finish the game I don't know if that makes sense to anyone else. I don't know if that's a logical way of thinking about it. But at the end of the day, I didn't want to collect the items that I didn't know existed. Now, here, the game tells you, if you didn't know, you have power bombs. Now, you have to beat the game to, with power bombs. In order to beat the game, you need to know that you have power bombs. But these doors, you see... They're not really doors. And these guys are actually the guys that are blocking the way. And these guys are really, really, really tough. This is one of the toughest battles, I think, in the game. Look how much damage these guys are doing. Like, I've already lost an entire thing of health. There goes another one. That's, that's an entire 99. But there goes another one. So here I'm pretty much thinking like I'm, I'm, I'm about to die. Good thing I just saved. But um, let me get back to the point that I was trying to make a second ago. To me, the game revealing every item. 
I just, like I said, I felt like I didn't earn it, and I didn't want to go out collecting every single item in the game. And so I had decided at this point, as I'm humping that wall, that door, that I wasn't going to go and collect every item in the game. I was just going to go straight to the end. I was just going to follow the mark on the map and just finish. Um, because for two reasons, like that, that's the first reason. Like, like I said, I don't know if that makes sense to anyone else. Um, I feel like the, maybe on a second playthrough, I would, you know, look things up. I don't know. But the fact that it gives you every item location, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, and it's not a bad thing, but I just, I don't like it, okay? And the second reason I was looking, I was like, I don't want to backtrack. To this point, I love this game. I really, really do. I've, I've had a lot of fun playing with this game, uh, playing this game, not playing with it, uh, playing this game, and I didn't want this item collecting uh, bit to kind of drag on too long and have the game overstay its welcome and then me be like i'm not having a good time anymore collecting every single item so what i was like i said what i was going to do is just collect every item on the way so for example this one how do you go about getting it well it seems to me that it's way up high so you got to get a shine spark going you got to jump up it's a cleverly hidden one and we've never been in this room before and I find it kind of cool. Uh, but like I said, the reason I wanted to do it post-commentary is because I wanted to give my thoughts on the game. And I didn't want to do like a regular review like I've done in the past. I don't know if that's what I'm going to end up doing now because, well, like I said, this is not the last episode. <laughs> that's a bit of a spoiler. Um, I don't get to the end. Um, and you'll see why. Um but I didn't want to talk about the game a little bit and the things that I enjoyed about the game. And I wanted to start with the gameplay. Um, so this is, you know, obviously this is a third person, well, kind of halfway third person, uh, first person side-scrolling action game. And I think it's worthwhile talking about the 3D side-scrolling aspect, which is kind of a weird way of saying it, 3D side-scrolling, but that's how it is. A lot of the game is spent moving left and right, though there are parts where you have you have the ability to move in four directions, not diagonally, though, which is kind of weird a little bit. Um, but it is an action game. It's not a platformer, really. And not in the Metroidvania truest sense. And what I mean by that is that the game is... It's pretty linear, up, I mean, before now. Uh... It opens up kind of a lot um, at this point. But the way you're supposed to go is pretty clearly and neatly laid out for you. There are very few chances for backtracking. And in fact, I think there are many times where the, the, the doors lock behind you permanently until you reach a certain point in the game. And at which point the doors will open again and you can re-explore areas. And, well, I mean, that's very unusual for a Metroid game. Uh, this means that there's a lot less sense of exploration than you would find in, like, you know, Super Metroid even, or Metroid Prime, or even Zero Mission. Definitely Zero Mission, for sure. Uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing, though, um, because the game continuously surprises you, keeps you on your toes as you progress through the levels. I'm going to pause here, because... You see another one of these doors, and I think right here the game is still pretty linear, even though it's kind of opened up to you completely. Like, obviously, we've never been here before. And you're like, oh, I'm just going to explore. But it's really not. And you'll see why. The game is guiding you the way it wants you to go, even now. Here, as I'm looking through the map, trying to figure out where to go, like, I just came down here for what reason? Well, let me go, let me keep continue going and fight one of these fight another one of these guys. I don't know how I feel about these power bomb doors being enemies. On the one hand, yes, 
every enemy is easy now because you're like super powerful Samus. So like I guess they have to give you a challenge. On the other hand, like I don't know. I I just don't know. I don't know how I feel so far about the post game. I don't know how I feel about the post game. The the main game is great. The main the main game is the main game is I don't know. I don't want to say it's my favorite Metroid. Definitely not. Uh, but it's it's definitely a really 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 good game. But what this entire post game caught me off guard. Everything about it. Uh, I've, obviously, it's never been done. Um, but anyway, <laughs> like I said, I don't know how I feel about them. And here, I think I take the wrong way. I have no idea what the correct answer is, if I'm being honest. So, we're going to go around. We're going back to the main sector. At this point, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to continue with the game. I'm going to finish the game off. I don't I don't want to collect anything. I'm just going to go the way I know. Um, kind of backtrack around. Collect that one, maybe that one uh, item on the way. And just be done with the game. Okay? But back to my thoughts on the game. While I aimlessly walk around this entire space station. <laughs> um, so, you know, as I said... The game now, and even before, during the main game, um, the game continuously surprises you, keeps you on your toes as you progress to the levels. But there are some frustratingly logged off areas that seem like they should totally be open, at least logically, and like it doesn't seem to be any reason for the section to be locked off other than the game just doesn't want you to go there yet. Which... Honestly, it was a bit of a bummer at first, but like as the game went on, it didn't bother me as much. A lot more emphasis is put into the action of combat as opposed to any other Metroid game that I can think of that I've ever played. At least I, I haven't played um, Dread, so I don't know about that one. But like combat in this game, I think has been, I don't know if I would say the best of any Metroid, but definitely top definitely up there Samus can dodge like enemy attacks with the press of the control pad like she does the sense move and the direction does matter like dodging into an attack will, will it will result in damage and you gotta learn when to dodge when to attack it's important enemies have patterns they will expose themselves making themselves more vulnerable uh, you, you gotta wait for the opening you know but you know they will also they, they'll announce attacks you'll see late like if you really look at these these super bomb monsters for example you can tell when they're about to attack and if you really pay attention you can you can see that with any enemy um and and it's these attacks when they hesitate i think when you know that they're about to give you like a really good attack that's going to cause massive damage and that brings me to to the first person sequences they're a little bit weird um i think sometimes they help break up the action sequences by forcing you to look around when you need to see what to do next like i do it all the time right you've seen me do it but sometimes there are four segments where like samus has to focus on one particular object and then it triggers the next scene and I've had really, really tough times with those in the past. Like, do you remember the Ridley fight? Where I literally just looked around for ages. Trying to figure out what I was supposed to find. Like, look, <laughs> I probably went in circles like ten times. Those are, for me, are a bit of a miss. A little bit. Um, I didn't like those particular sequences. I think there were only like three or four in the game. But for me, they were a miss. This is one of the items that I would say right here is a big winner for me because so far we haven't gotten anything worthwhile. And these guys are really tough. These bad guys, super tough. You've seen them. Uh, I don't like fighting them. And so I'm thinking in my head, like, is this, e is this even worth doing? You'll see that it is. It's actually an energy part, and it'll be our fourth one, so we'll get an entire energy tank after this. Now, as far as continuing with the first-person thing, 
I keep getting distracted because things are actually happening in the game, so I want to talk about that too. Um, the sequences, the first person sequences, uh, they're like boss battles, for example, where you need to shoot an enemy or energize a switch or something like that. Those are pretty cool. Now, be careful here because that th I think this means this guy is like getting his health back because I missed the instant kill. So I don't make I won't make that mistake again. I'm looking for him to be stunned, and as soon as he gets stunned, you better believe that I'm going in for the kill. And it like the fact that they can like warp in and out of like reality. The fact that some enemies can do that is extremely annoying. Do you guys remember like the tentacle monster? Like every time like there would be times where you would shoot it and it would dodge your attacks. And I, and I guess I'm, I shouldn't say that because Samus can dodge too. So it's only fair that enemies can attack too. But to me, it, I, I, like I, I just got frustrated with these guys. There's the energy part. It's actually a war, really nice. Actually, no, I collected an energy part earlier, I think, and it gave me an energy tank. This is the first of another four. So obviously it means I'm missing another three. And I think at this point I was like, there's so much to discover that I'm missing a whole lot. I'm missing a lot, I think. I think when I booted up the game, I was only at 64% collection. So that'll tell you how much I missed during the actual game. I, I am... Like, you cannot collect 100% normal. You The only way you can collect 100% in this game is doing the post-game. And again, I don't know how I feel about that yet. I don't know how I feel about that because I haven't beaten the game. But I will come up with a feeling after I'm done. <laughs> uh, so, like, obviously, I don't think we've ever had a, a Metroid game with both first and third person sequences. The Metroid Prime Trilogy was all first person. Every once in a while you would see Samus in like morph ball mode. And that was third person, but that doesn't count. So I, you know, when you, when you put them together, you get 3D side scrolling action with some first person sequences. And I think the random first person pieces actually work very well. It, to like with the 3D pieces to, to create a game that feels like it really has good pacing. And like... Some, like you've seen the action sequences they're some they're super hectic and they're full of like super super tense moments um I, I can think of the key hunter queen or whatever it's called fight um the fight with i think it's called nightmare um i mean i don't i don't remember very many moments in metroid where i felt more tense maybe the crocomire fight <laughs> um when you're getting close to the acid and he's pushing you back or I mean not, not close to the acid when you're getting close to the other side because you can't kill him right like you have to push him that's the only way you can beat him you push him you push him you push him you push him um <laughs> that was a very tense fight as well um but some of the moments in this game are some of the more most tense fights and action sequences that I've ever experienced in the metroid game and then they're just followed by some really low-key moments with some like slight puzzle solving or like environmental manipulation and then a safe station and then you rinse and repeat intense fight slow down save point i feel it works really 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 game uh really 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 good though like i really really enjoyed this is the room where i get completely completely bamboozled i have no idea what to do in this room the elevator is locked the door is red there's an item in here clearly i have no idea what to do i don't want to look anything up i don't but i do because this room frustrated the crap out of me anyway I, so, like, it's these kinds of parts. I don't mind puzzle solving. In fact, I enjoy it. I love Zelda games, for example. And I'm not saying Zelda games are puzzle games. But they do have, like, an aspect of, like, trying to figure out, like, environmental manipulation, right? Like, what are you supposed to do to get past this room, right? There's got to be a trick. Or maybe the door is just locked. 
And I think earlier I mentioned there's a hallway where I went left instead of straight. I think that's where I may have gone wrong. I don't know, right? I don't know. But this room like really confused me. And like I said, I like these portions of any game. I think breaking up the action and the fighting to kind of do some puzzle solving, I think it works really well in any game. There's lots of games like this. Um, like Tomb Raider, the new the new remakes are, are like really good at this. There's action, 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 and there's like slight puzzle solving. Like I already mentioned Zelda. Um, but I think combat is the biggest part of this game. And I already mentioned this, but you have to pay a lot more attention to enemy patterns than ever before. And I think that's a great addition to the Metroid series. It doesn't just include when you need to sense move, but you have to pay attention to see when enemies are vulnerable. Like, do you remember the armadillo monsters? I think, I don't know what they're called, but they have this one animation where they jump at you and their claws get stuck in the ground. That's the best example I can think of. At that moment, they're vulnerable and you can kill them with one hit. All right, those are the perfect example of how you have to pay attention to the enemy animations more than in any other Metroid game that I've ever played. Like I've, I've I'll mention it again. I haven't played Federation Force. Um, there's a another. I think there's a three another 3DS Metroid game, and I haven't played Dread. So I think those are the ones I'm missing. Oh, I've never played uh, Samus Returns on the Game Boy. I have it, and I will play it eventually. Um, but I've never actually played it. Um, anyway, um, I, I, I do think that the combat is extremely satisfying in this game. And it's because of the high-paced action and the dodging. It makes you feel like Sam is such a badass, to be honest with you. She easily dodges enemy attacks, and she goes in and out uh, you know, of combat, and she has these finishing moves. It's just such fluidity. And, like... I honestly, you know, like, this is kind of cheesy, but the first thing I thought of was, like, John Wu movies. You know, a gun fu movie where you're just, like, shooting, 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 like, doing, like, gymnastics around the room. That, like, I cannot think. Look at me. Look at me right here trying to, like, maybe it's a power bomb. And I, no, it's not a power bomb. Fun fact. <laughs> it's not a power bomb. Then I'm like, maybe there's a switch. Maybe there's a, a switch that I have to shoot somewhere. And I'm like, you know what? There's nothing here. I gotta go back. <laughs> Just and I'm like at this point, I'm like, I'm going to go all the way back to where we fought the first monster with the um, the power bomb monster, and I'm just gonna continue up the elevator that way. If you've played this game, you know where this is going. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, I do remember one thing that caught me off guard was. The enemies don't drop any pickups. And I mentioned this earlier, in like the very first, at the beginning of the game. They, they don't drop health, they don't drop missiles. I, I think this adds a layer of complexity to the, to the game. Because you, you gotta get good at the basic gameplay mechanics, like sense moving, to survive between safe stations. But it also adds that much more like hecticness to the fights. Uh, you might need to stop and recharge your missiles in the middle of a fight or your health in the middle of a fight. Heaven forbid you have to recharge your health <laughs> um, like I did multiple times. Actually, I think I've done it twice in this game. Uh, I did it once in the Nightmare fight, and I did it once in the uh, Key Hunter Queen Nest fight. This this particular, this particular uh, side hopper caused me more trouble... Uh, that I'm proud of. I'm not sure what happened. <laughs> but yeah, like I'm trying to think back on, in the game and like I think twice I had to recharge my health. Um, I didn't die because that's such a cool mechanic. I think that's such a cool mechanic. It's such a cool mechanic. I really do think so. Um, to be able to recharge your health mid-fight and recharge your missiles because there's no missile pickups. I kind of dig that. I don't know that I would want... I don't know how I... Like, is it better than the original version? 
where you just get items from killing enemies. I didn't. Well, I guess. I guess my point is I didn't miss enemy drops. I didn't miss them. I wasn't like I wish there were enemy drops because I don't need them. I don't know. I I haven't looked at any reviews or any people's opinions on this game yet, so I don't know how people feel about it. Um, but I can I can see that being a, one of those things that people are like, ah, this sucks. But I kind of dig I kind of dig it. I don't know. I don't I don't know, man. Um, we're in the frozen section here, so let's talk about the sections, uh, sectors. Each sector represent a biome. You know, um, for example, uh, uh, sector one is kind of junglish. Sector two, like the one we're in, is frozen. Sector three is hot. There's um, also sector sector. Wow, words are hard. Sector sector four, is, which is the weapons research lab. And as you can imagine, each now you you all saw it. <laughs> each section is, is puzzles, environmental obstacles that relates to the type of environment we're in. Sector one has those um, Samus eating plants. Uh, I think they're Samus eaters. I don't know if that's what they're called in this game, but uh, that's what they're called in Super Metroid. Um, mm, sector three has giant, annoying lava men who throw lava balls at you. Um, they're just generally rude, and just get in your way, and so on and so forth. Um, it, like at first, I thought this game was going to be like a traditional Metroidvania game, you know, in like the most traditional sense. But that that, that it, it's not. That doesn't mean you don't get to backtrack. And as you progress through the game, you'll unlock different abilities, right? Like different beams, just like in any other Metroid game. Um, I'll get into the controversial nature of how Samus unlocks these abilities later. Um, but su suffice it to say that once you unlock an ability, you can then go back and explore different parts of the different sections. And in fact, I think Adam tells you to go back and back and forth quite a few times. So, um, you know, even so, it's still kind of linear. And the game will tell you exactly where you need to go. Like, Adam's going to be like, you need to go here. There's there's not a much, not, not much, you know, ability to kind of like... Yeah, I'm going to go there. But first, I want to explore this other section. That that doesn't happen very much. You know, it's not so different from Metroid Fusion, if you think about it. And kind of in Zero Mission, kind of in Zero Mission, the Chozo statues tell you where to go. Obviously, in Zero Mission, you can ignore them. Um, but they will tell you literally where to go next. So I don't think if people like Fusion and people like Zero Mission but they don't like the way Adam tells you exactly where to go in this game, I think that's kind of a double standard. And again, I've never read any reviews. So, I I don't want to, I don't want to do like a straw man argument and like say people who say this are wrong because I don't know if people actually say this. But I will tell you that the, there is a difference between this game and Zero Mission. In Zero Mission, you can choose to go elsewhere first. Like, you know, this game does not do that. It does not give you such liberties. And this is because... Uh, I think much more emphasis is placed on the story and the plot and the pacing. And in this way, Metroid Other M is very different from other any other Metroid game. You'll go where you need to go to advance the plot. And along the way, you'll, f you'll fight enemies and soft puzzles and unlock abilities and encounter bosses that you'll need to defeat to progress. Right? It's not like any other game before it. I th you know, among among the many things that we'll un that we unlock in this game, you know, missiles, super missiles, ice beam, wave beam, screw attack, grappling hook. So there is definitely a tangible sense of progression, which is very Metroid-like. You know, each unlock, with with each item that we've unlocked along the, the way, or have been authorized to use <laughs> along the way there's definitely a, a sense of progression and samus does feel stronger more powerful enemies that were tough before enemies that were bosses at one point are like we dispatch them with like incredible ease as samus gets stronger and the feeling is really 
It's really, really good. The game does a really good job of showing the scale of the enemies in comparison to the player. And by the end, we're annihilating everything in your path. Like, those key hunters stood no chance, right? Those key hunters are like nothing. They were kicking our butts. They were a boss. And we're just like, screw attack. Done. That's it. Now we're getting near the end of this particular episode. Here I am. I'm coming back up. Okay. We're going back through the residential area, I think it's called. And in my head, the first thing I'm thinking is like, it's okay. You know, I don't need to collect every item. What we need to do is just go through that first elevator that we came across, right? We got kind of a cutscene of that we needed to, you know, try to bomb the door. And the very first time we were told we had power bombs by the game, we're going to bomb that door right here, this door right there, the one I'm walking through. But instead, I'm just going to go up this elevator. Guess what? Wrong. get up there that's where i'm supposed to be clearly i am missing something and i'm telling you i think in my head right now as i'm playing um i'm like what did i miss but now that i'm re-watching this and doing this commentary that that section that where i went left when we first went down to section sector two i went left i think i need to go straight i think that's the issue I don't know, right? Like, I'm I'm totally confused. I'm totally stuck. And at this point, I'm like, man, it's been like 30 minutes. I, I, I can't keep going. I thought I was going to beat the game tonight. I feel really bad. <laughs> I feel kind of silly. What the heck is going on? It doesn't matter. You know what? We're going to continue on in the next episode. I think in the next episode, maybe, maybe, just maybe, it will be the last episode of the game. I'm still not going to look anything up. I'm going to continue playing the game as normal, uh, and we'll continue our discussion. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Metroid Other M. I hope you'll join me next time as we maybe finish the game. <laughs> uh, maybe. Until then.